A Utah man's chilling confession. They did not deserve what I did to them. From an exclusive interview. Well, let's see where this goes then. Used as evidence. How did you pick your victim? For multiple rapes. Did you ever left the door unlocked? And murders. I chose the wrong way to handle it. Box 13 investigates a serial killer's confession tonight at 9. Hi there, I'm Jeff Taz with the uh, Fox 13 digital team. And I am now joined by Adam Herbetz uh, of our Fox 13 investigative team. And tonight uh, you are running an interview that uh, with a man that is infamous in the, in the state, uh, serial killer, serial rapist. Uh, and it's an exclusive interview, Adam. Uh, Mark Burns, why don't you give us a little backstory on him and then we'll get into what, uh, what people will see and hear tonight. Yeah, Jeff, this is a story that we've been working on for more than a year. Uh, people, especially in the Davis County area, are probably familiar with this long serial rape cold case that went unsolved for such a long time. These were a series of rapes that took place between 1991 and 2001. And for years and years and years, police had always been looking for a suspect that they called the Clearfield Rapist. This is a case that had been going on far longer than, than even my time here in Utah, certainly before my time, but a case that people had been talking about all the way up until 2019 when they finally made an arrest. A man in Ogden who was kind of just living this undercover life as a truck driver. They matched his DNA to a sibling. That sibling, that, that DNA was matched to some of the victims. And here we are now in 2020 with a man who's not just pleaded guilty to all these rape cases, but is now confessing to a series of new crimes that he had never previously been linked to before. Uh, one of those he's being sentenced for tomorrow. It's a murder case in Evanston, Wyoming. And when I spoke to him at the Davis County Jail earlier this year, he also confessed to two other murders, one of them in the state of Oregon and one of them in the state of Arizona. So these are cases that have taken decades to solve, and in, in part because of these confessions that he's given to me and to the FBI, it has helped people, uh, you know, hopefully get some closure. I mean, not just these rape victims in Utah um, and not just these victims in Wyoming, but all across the country, it seems like this is a man who really had no conscience, and, and he's going to talk about kind of his, his thought process and decision-making process as he, you know, lived this horrible life. Adam, talk about how you got this interview and, and how it came about, because you know he hasn't talked to anybody. You're the first one that he has talked to. Um, how did this all come about? Well, we had already been the first ones to run the story about his arrest back in September 2019. We got a tip and followed up on it pretty fast. We were outside of his house, you know, within hours after police led him out of there in handcuffs. So he probably was watching the news uh, just because of that. And then a couple months later, we ran another investigation. It's on our website right now, if you're interested, about his past back in the 70s. This is not a young guy. He's, I think, 69 or 70 years old right now. And he has been on death row in the past. Back in the 70s, Mark Douglas Burns was convicted of a rape in North Carolina, 1974. He was supposed to be uh, taken to the gas chamber. Back then, you could actually be sentenced to death for rapes, not just murders like, like, like now in 2020. So he was on death row. At some point, they passed a law that allowed um, convicted rapists to, to have their sentences lessened, um, but it should not have applied to his case. So our investigation that ran earlier this year, again, it's on our website if you're interested in learning more about this, it revealed the fact that he shouldn't have even made his way back to Utah. He shouldn't have ever gotten out of prison. He, he should have been killed. Regardless of how you feel about the death penalty, that's what the law said. And for whatever reason, a judge made an exception for him. And of course, the result of that is all these new victims in Utah, and of course, the murder victims in Wyoming, Oregon, 
and Arizona. He saw that we were looking into that, that we were running a story on that. So I think he saw my name pop up on the jail, you know, inmate visitation form. He was probably interested. He somewhat, you know, to an extent he knew who I was and he agreed to talk to me. You know, I think he had some reservations, but he said, let's see where this goes. And he was remarkably candid. And you'll see that tonight you know, in, in the way he speaks to me. Yeah, I mean, I got to say, you know, he reading the script for the for the piece tonight and, and it's just it's incredible. Um, he seems to be remorseful as a as much as a serial killer and rapist can be remorseful. Um, does he say why he is admitting to all this stuff now? Does he give any insight into that? Yeah, he I, he's remorseful to an extent, but he also says he didn't want to be caught. He wouldn't have confessed if it weren't for the fact that police had the evidence. He wanted to live a free life and he was hoping that he could, you know, he could live out the rest of his life uh, in Ogden at his house, um, living a quiet lifestyle. He says that um, back in 2002, he stopped committing crimes, that at some point he grew a conscience and he no longer had this desire to fulfill this sick need in his brain. But now that he has been arrested, he's basically giving up. He says, the only thing I have left to give to my victims is closure, is justice. And for that reason, he wants to confess to every crime that he's committed. Um, and, and that's also why he's pleaded guilty to every crime. It's not like he's fighting these cases in court. So, you know, I, he makes no excuses for his actions. He says he's a sick individual. He knows it. And I think to an extent he is interested in having his brain studied. Um, because he feels like there was always something wrong with him. Um, I don't know if, if that's, you know, a cop out or if there really is a biological or physiological reason for the reason that people commit these horrible crimes. But, you know, the purpose of this story is not to give this man a platform or to give him a reason to make excuses for what he did. That is certainly not the reason we are running this story. The reason we're, one, we're running this story is because this interview helped the investigation. Um, there, there are still multiple crimes that he's confessed to that police want to make sure are, are true and not false confessions. So I, I think it's very important that, you know, police and prosecutors have told us that we've used this interview that was recorded at the jail as part of our case. If we needed to prosecute him, we would have this in our back pocket because obviously he's very, he, he's very willing to confess. Uh, you know, you also include some of his victims, correct, uh, and, and how they're doing right now, uh, because you certainly don't, and, and the station certainly doesn't want to make it, uh, Burns a sympathetic figure, uh, because he did damage to not just the victims, but the victims' families and their friends and everyone who knew them. Um, so, you know, obviously that's that's a big thing for you. And I, it looks like we lost Adam. Let me see if he signs in again. Um, and it appears he did not. Anyways, folks, Fox 13 investigates a serial killer's confession. Confession. Mark Burns, his first interview and only interview with anybody uh, at any media. Uh, watch it tonight, Fox 13 at 9. Thank you for joining us uh, and take care. A Utah man's chilling confession. They did not deserve what I did to them. From an exclusive interview. Well, let's see where this goes then. Used as evidence. How did you pick your victims? For multiple rapes. Did you ever left the door unlocked? And murders. I chose the wrong way to handle it. Fox 13 investigates a serial killer's confession tonight at 9.